Sit down. Sit down. Happy Wednesday, everyone. So if you were going about your business yesterday and suddenly felt the earth shudder on its axis, it's not because Jerry Nadler tipped over. Damn. No, it's that Congress actually got something right. In a bipartisan vote, the House of Reps censured Rashida Tlaib. Yeah. Se yeah. Yeah. Okay. Censuring. It's less effective than putting Carmex on a cold sore, but we'll take it. For even 22 Democrats to leave statements blaming Israel and America for the 10 7 attacks while calling the Hamas massacre resistance were simply too much. True, Tlaib is so nutty, she's asked not to sit near people with allergies. <laughs> now, censuring doesn't really amount to much. It's the congressional equivalent of fining Hamas for trespassing. But it seems the Dems are finally waking up to the out of control monsters they've created. It's probably how Steve Ducey felt when Peter turned 12. <laughs> Here's how Tlaib's fellow squad monsters tried to defend her. What is true here is that every single one of them has not acknowledged the fact that Palestinians are dying in the tens of thousands, but will continue to say it is us who are not acknowledging humanity. This elected body enslaved black people. Racism and sexism, Islamophobia get pushed off of elevators, xenophobia and more right here in this workplace. Maybe because of your lack of diversity, you lack the cognitive and emotional ability to recognize diverse opinions when they speak truth to power. Whoa. No wonder Trump wants to bring back asylums. <laughs> I bet Ilhan Omar's brother is so glad she divorced him. <laughs> but if they build those asylums, they better build them big because tens of thousands of college kids now believe anti-Semitism is something you get extra credit for. They prefer brutal dictatorships, one that counter their novel pronouns with a noose. So like confused parents, mainstream Dems are scrambling to come up with a way to tell their spoiled brat children, behave or go to your room. So how do we get to a point where young Dems think terrorists are are the good guys, while the state of Israel, the freest nation in the Mideast, deserves to be destroyed. Well, here's some history that the brats never learned. When Israel became an independent state in the 1940s, progressives supported it. Coming out of World War II, the Holocaust, and a history of pogroms, it was Jews who were seen as the oppressed. And boy, is that an understatement to call six million people exterminated oppressed. It's like calling me kind of cute. African-Americans recalled that Jews had marched with them in civil rights demonstrations. Jews there had been arrested and even killed. Too bad academia loves hiding facts like that. But then a strange thing happened. Israel committed the great unpardonable sin. Much like me, it was successful. <laughs> and worse, it looked a lot like America while doing it. And no one hates success more than malicious failures. Suddenly, Israel was no longer a safe haven for a people who had been targeted throughout history. It was no longer the little country that could. It was an oppressor. Nobody loves fighting the man like a Democrat. And it's all based in envy. It's what progressives have instead of actual progress. You know, we can't build so let's tear down is their motto. So when America went to war in the Mideast after 9-11, you just knew sooner or later the left would decide that we were the bad guy, which meant, of course, our one true ally in the Mideast must be one, too. It's the basic progressive formula. America is a racist oppressor, and if you help it, then you are, too. But what about the millions of mostly black and brown illegals pouring over our southern border right now? Guess they must love racist oppression, too. But if you spent your time burning down buildings instead of going to class, that formula makes sense. And when the left gives the arsonist trophies, it only grows. But the full tilt away from Israel finally came with that OG progressive Barack Obama. Imagine looking at the Mideast and deciding the Iranians are the good guys. That's like having 600 channels and deciding on CNN. <laughs> I know. It was under Obama that Iran's frozen assets were returned to the tune of $150 billion. Let's see. Iran funds Hamas and Hezbollah, and we give them $150 billion. Can you believe that didn't work out? What's Farsi for dumbass? <laughs> Obama also gave 400 mil to the Palestinian Authority, money funneled to their pay to slay program, which rewards families of so-called martyrs. I guess 72 virgins isn't enough of a sell. And now Obama undercuts Biden's own pro-Israel stance by saying nobody's hands are clean. Wow, did Barack eat a bad bagel or something? Or was it another dog? 
Meanwhile, Kamala announced she'll lead the fight against Islamophobia. Maybe she'll start a bail fund for Hamas prisoners. They probably don't need it, though. The top three leaders of Hamas are reportedly worth $11 billion, while their people live in squalor. But really, this hate didn't spring up overnight. It's been simmering on campuses and the media for years. But with new angry radicals entering government, the screeching entitled chickens are now coming home to roost. So where does this leave their party? Well, if you're a wild-eyed miscreant tearing down posters of kidnapped kids, and those are just faculty members, it puts you in the driver's seat. Because while college is all ideology and no experience, in our legislatures nationwide, the new left's influence is growing like the hair on Joy Behar's back. <laughs> and so, like groupies, when I drop my nipple ring in the pool, it's a race to the bottom. Nipple ring. These kids aren't growing out of it, no. Five young pro-Palestinian workers at a Jewish-owned coffee shop in Manhattan just walked off the job over the store's support for Israel. The owner even offered to take them to dinner to talk things out, but they quit instead. The store was on the verge of closing, but then members of the local Jewish community showed up in droves. Some even volunteered to work shifts themselves. So talk about a contrast, a closed fist versus a helping hand. Anyway, it's no wonder our cities are starting to look like Gaza. In that sense, standing up to this growing radicalism makes all of us Israel. It's a similar fight. Luckily here, it won't involve tanks and guns, just votes. I hope. Let's welcome tonight's guest. She's my fourth favorite Charlie, after Brown, Sheen, and Manson. Outkick host Charlie Arnold. <laughs> He packs a deadlier punch than Jim Jones. Retired MMA fighter, Chael Sonnen. She's like a paperclip, wiry, thin, and easy to lose in between seat cushions. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor, Cat Tiff. And he likes these intros almost as much as he likes me. New York Times bestselling author, comedian, and former NWA champion, Cyrus. Charlie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice leather. Oh, thank you. Yeah, are we starting to see a rift in the party between the traditional Democrats and their psychopath offspring? Uh, maybe so, uh, but like you just mentioned, censuring someone, it doesn't really serve to do much of anything, and I still believe that to be the case. Uh, you just have to wonder, though, when you think of the squad, when you think of Rashida Tlaib, what is her IQ? I mean, truly, what is her IQ? It's got to be in the negatives, right? Because from beginning until being censured, thank you, yes, uh, she just has done everything wrong. Mm -hmm. And she's had every opportunity to correct herself and make it better. For example, when she was being chased down the hallway, do you condone Hamas beheading babies? No response. Asked again, no response. Asked again, no response. Just, just say no mm -hmm. and get them off your back. I mean, just, just play the game, right? You're a politician. You know how to lie. You know how to play the game. And then from there, it just got even worse. I mean, from the river to the sea, tweeting that out, getting all of the flack, and still saying nothing, mm -hmm. not taking it down, not saying I'm sorry. It's just it, the whole time, it, it makes no sense to me. And Cori Bush and her other friend, Ilan Omar, same thing. I mean, did you watch Cori Bush's ranting and raving? Yes, of course. Watch it on mute. Mm -hmm. It's even better. <laughs> you know, uh, the body language you're saying, the body yes. language was better than the words. <laughs> sure. uh, you gave uh, an eloquent evidence that she is indeed stupid. Yes, very much. Joe, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. So happy to have you here. Good to be here. So you've been following this story as closely as we have. What are your thoughts on this topic? Well, I love the way that you set it up because you you, you made it sound as though a Democrat versus a liberal. And I haven't seen a Democrat in a long time. And in all fairness, I was happy to see they still existed. Was it 22 of them yes. stood up and pushed back? I mean, I really didn't think that was good news. I will tell you this. Uh, I, I watched uh, Tulsi get basically eliminated in 2016 because Hillary implied that she was a Russian spy. And I can't help but wonder, what if she was actually Russian? And what if she lived here and had Russian kids and went to schools and she got elected and then gets put out to Washington, D.C. and then goes with the Russians? I, I, mean, I, I just have to wonder, sometimes you're here to defend your district and sometimes you're here to defend your country. Our country has stepped forward to say who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. That's it or you're not a patriot. Mm -hmm. That is the litmus test and she's failing it. That's a great point because she's like, um, you'd think that she had competing interests with our country, but she doesn't. The country doesn't even factor in. Right. She has a sole interest. Yes. Crazy cat. Crazy. <laughs> what did you think about the censuring? Was it, is it, I'm so happy that I learned to pronounce it. 
Do you know that I keep saying it? Censuring? Because on the five, I said censoring. Yeah. It was embarrassing. I felt humiliated. You Not don't get embarrassed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't, I mean, look, okay. I condemn Hamas, okay? It's not, Thank to you. me, that's not hard to say. I also, the cent, I feel like the Congress got a little censure happy. Mm -hmm. It's this tit for tat thing based on partisanship or political points where it's like, okay, these people are supposed to work for us and actually do things and so much of their job is just like, ah, got them, right, yeah. censure. And for me, Obviously, you can't do anything more than that because what she said is constitutionally protected speech, which is a good thing. It's a great thing that we have the First Amendment in this country. I thank you for the First Amendment. Yeah, let's go. Woo! Obviously, we have a pro Hamas audience. Right. But I, I think that, you know, if you don't like the statement, use your own speech to say that you don't like the statement because I think more information is better. If this is how she feels and she says it, now we know how she feels. Exactly. I think it's better to have that information. But as Dana pointed out to me in the break, censuring is also a form of speech. Sure, but I just, if, if we get to a place where that's all they're doing every day and still considering themselves to be like, oh, look at how great all they're doing is just, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. Do something. It's just but Kat, that you means you're not hard. spending your money. Yeah, well, I mean, they could. I, when will they ever? Will they ever cut something? Yes, one day they'll cut something. I don't something. think they will. What do you think, Tyrus? What about the fact that these guys are living eleven billion dollars? Do you think the protesters on the street know how wealthy Hamas leaders are? Yeah, because I'm sure they're doing TikToks of their workouts and their <laughs> their indentured wives and their parties in the hotels. I think what they're saying at the Four Seasons or something. They're just living their best lives, getting their workouts in. <laughs> uh, all their bodyguards are overweight, so you got a good shot of getting them if you find out where they're at. Just like to point that out. But <laughs> Charlie made a good point. Cat made a good point. Made a good point. But we're missing the point. Mm -hmm. The reason why you don't say I condemn something is when you don't. Mm -hmm. And to the point where any man in here who's ever had a wife force him to apologize, and all he has to do at dinner is say, I'm sorry, and you can have lemon ring pie and go on with your evening, we will sit there and be like, sorry, kids. Dad's going down with this one. Yeah. No. And the whole night is Because you believed in something so strongly that you did not want to put the toilet seat down anymore. OK? I put it up. You can put it down. You're willing to die for that argument. She does not have a problem with Hamas. Mm -hmm. They don't have a problem with Hamas did. And we keep making this mistake like, well, maybe they don't understand. Maybe her IQ. No, this is who she is. Mm -hmm. When you want to see who the progressives are and what they're about, this is it. Mm -hmm. They're not going to change. Mm -hmm. Because if you really cared about the people of the Palestinians, if you cared about them, you'd be like, I condemn Hamas for their actions has caused this. How do we work with Israel to get these people out. Hamas needs to go. No. When she talks about them, it's a blanket statement. So censor is not good enough because if you go back during the Civil War, there was six, I believe, 16 senators that refused to acknowledge and they were expelled. Mm -hmm. They were put out. They said the same type of rhetoric. You can say whatever you want, but we need to remember that there's consequences for what you say. What she's saying is she was fine with babies being murdered. She had no issue with that because it was on her team. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. We need to stop trying to figure this yeah, out. Yeah, just listen it's, to them. Listen to them. They are not hiding it. When they're not speaking they in code. They are, believe them. Yeah. 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 Like, they're, that's who they are. All right. But, and Tyrus, it's the opposite of leadership, right? She yeah. lives in a district where this is what's popular to get elected. But if what's popular to get elected isn't right, you're the one that needs to stand back and tell everybody, it's not what we're doing here. It's not just for the good of the, when you look left and right. It's for our entire nation. That's the role that I'm well, in. Well, that's, that's the problem with, that's why you need term limits, because politicians run for the next election. They don't do it. They just get in. They smile. It would solve a lot of problems. And then, yeah, it would, it would. All right. We must move on. Up next, they want to slash the pay of the secretary who's gay. Who wrote that? If you'll be in the New York area and would like tickets to see Gutfeld, go to foxnews.com slash Gutfeld and click on the link to join our studio audience. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.